Aren't you the cutest little <laughs> oh, what? Hey everyone, it's Kirtan Singh here and I'm back with a brand new video. Today I've set the camera up in a different position this time just to get a different angle and just to change things up a little bit. So I just came back from watching Captain Marvel and yes, I am a few weeks late on watching this because I just couldn't decide on whether or not I was going to watch this or not. But then I heard that the end credit scene relates to Avengers Endgame slash Infinity War and well, I wanted to go and watch it just for that end credit scene. And also just because, you know, see what Captain Marvel is like. Is she really going to be the one who defeats Thanos? Is she really the most powerful character in the MCU? And really, I don't think she is. At no point are we actually shown how powerful this character is. We kept on being told that she's the most powerful character in the MCU, that she's really powerful, she's a strong female character, all of that things associated with a strong character. We've been told outside of the film all of these things, but we don't get shown it really. The best thing she does, and yes, there are spoilers alert here just in case you didn't realize, but I am going to cover the movie itself. The best thing she does is really just blow up a bunch of ships, I guess stop a missile of sort and really just push her back into other missiles. But she never really takes on anyone who's really powerful or does something of like great significance that really makes you think, wow, she's powerful. I've got a bunch of notes on my phone. They aren't in order of how what happens in the movie. But I'm just going to go through them just so I don't miss anything that I noted down. So firstly, the opening tribute to Stan Lee with how the Marvel logo comes up was amazing. It was really beautiful and I really enjoyed watching this. But going on into how we're introduced to Captain Marvel, I accidentally wrote to Miss Marvel here, but it's Captain Marvel. We see her struggling with her memories and we're seeing her fight Jude Law's character. I can't remember his name right now. But we see him, her fighting him and she's getting emotional during the fight and she's going to use her proton blast from her hands. But then Jude Law is telling her, don't do that, fight without your emotions and such. But we have a set goal for Captain Marvel. We have the goal of not getting emotional during fight and fighting with her pure skill, not relying on raw power. But then not long later, we see her defeat 20 or so skulls without her powers of like the proton blast because her hands are locked in place by these metal arms, not metal arms, but like these metal caskets and she has to fight using her fist. But it just doesn't make sense because about 10-15 minutes ago, we saw her struggling fighting with her fist. So we expect her to, over the course of the film, to learn not to get emotional and learn to control her power and simply fight. But what it does do is set up Jude Law's character as being someone who's really powerful. Because 20 or so scrolls couldn't take down Captain Marvel, but Jude Law's character could. So we should see him as a threat or as someone who's very strong. The problem is that it doesn't even pay off at the end. So at the end, Captain Marvel and Jude Law, who is revealed to be a bad guy, he is go, he has a gun and stuff, and he has his weapon, which is like the anti-gravity kind of weapon. And they're like facing off at each other at, um, with one another. And then he puts away his weapons and he talks, you know, I said we were going to fight without emotion. Let's see how strong you've actually become. Let's see if you can fight without emotion and such. And then Captain Marvel just blasts him away with a proton blast, completely negating the whole setup that they had at the start of the movie with her being unable to defeat him without relying on her pure emotion and her proton blasts. But then at the end of the movie, she doesn't even need to really develop as a character and fight him fist on fist. She just used her proton blast. There's no connection with the story. There's a, a setup, but no payoff. So continuing on with Captain Marvel and her fighting scenes, we have Captain Marvel later on in the movie as she fights the rest of the Kree soldiers, so the ones that were making up that core team. You had Dijon, Dijon, I can't remember the actor's name, but he has two swords. We have one with powerful fists. You have one with the gun. And they're all really fighting against her. And the weirdest thing happened, the movie turned into Guardians of the Galaxy for some stupid reason. They have a song playing, it's some rock song, it's like all about girls or something like that. It's talking about girls and stuff, powerful women of some sort, I'm pretty sure. I can't remember off the top of my head, but it's so out of place. Because the one thing that happens, it immediately takes away from the tension of that fight. We're seeing Captain Marvel take on four or five of her fellow Kree soldiers, people we know we should think of highly of because they're part of that core team but then you have this rock song playing it's not dramatic music and it's treating it like a joke it doesn't come off how it does in um, Guardians of the Galaxy because Guardians of the Galaxy had set it up 
right off the bat that this is a different movie. But this movie, as I said earlier, starts off with that intense memory scene and then with her being told to not be emotional during fights and such, it's taking itself seriously in that sense. And then when you have her fight her fellow comrades and have this song playing on top, there's no real threat that Captain Marvel won't be able to defeat these people. They're a pushover, they're a joke, and they actually were to Captain Marvel. This doesn't really make sense, you know? You have our Captain Marvel as Carol Danvers as an adult, she's flying the plane with Marvel, and then she crashes, and Marvel is so damaged that she's bleeding and she's unable to get out of the ship. But then you have Captain Marvel, Carol Danvers, who without her powers is a-okay. She gets out of the ship and she haps Marvel out. And it just doesn't really make sense, you know? How am I seeing weakness in my character when there isn't any at all? She goes through a spaceship crash and she gets up and she's fine. She's better than the person who is an alien. Speaking of this crash scene, I'm just going to read through my notes because there's a part which doesn't make sense. So at one point in the movie, the scrolls have captured Captain Marvel. This is tying into what I said earlier when she took down 20 plus scrolls without her proton blast. And what happens is that they're going through her memories. During this point, we're seeing um, aspects of her past. We don't know exactly what's going on, but we see parts of it. And we see that Marvel is shooting a scroll, probably Talos by the looks of it, as he's coming towards them. And we see it from Carol's point of view. And this is her memory, supposedly. Yet, the actual memory doesn't have Marvel standing up shooting Talos. Talos isn't even there. Marvel is actually dead, and it's Jude Law's character that's going up towards Carol Danvers, who's pointing the gun at him. So, how does her memory change from that to what it actually is? Why do the Skrulls, who actually have the technology to see accurate memories in Carol Danvers, struggle and are not able to actually see the real memory? Shouldn't Talos see the memory of him being in that memory and be like, wait, I wasn't there. I didn't kill Marvel. I didn't do any of this stuff. He doesn't act like that. He just shrugs it off and is like, go back further or something like that. He says something along that line. And it doesn't make sense. But tying in with the poor writing of this film. Because even there's a point where they're looking through the memories and Carol has a conversation with Dr. Harper. I'm pretty sure her name is Marvel, the human name of Marvel. And the dialogue there is just so quick. And it just doesn't flow at all. And then it, it's a memory, but then later on it just becomes even more jarring. And the whole writing and direction of the whole film is just very jarring. It doesn't really work that well. So Captain Marvel wears a mask when she goes underwater and when she's in space, even after she unlocks her full power, when she's chasing after um, Jude Law in that spaceship and everything, she's wearing a mask. But then in the final scene, when she's taking the scrolls to another place, She's not wearing a mask at all, and it doesn't make sense. She should be wearing a mask in space, whether or not it's the final scene or earlier. I doubt that within the space of a few hours or possibly days, she's mastered her powers enough that she doesn't need a mask. Speaking of being in space, the CGI at times was terrible. Captain Marvel didn't look like a real person was there. It looked like it was just some model flying around, and at times, her aspects were a little disoriented and it weren't consistent to what the actual character, the actual actor Brie Larson looked like. The same thing happened with Goose the Cat or whatever the monster version of the cat is. At times the CGI looked terrible and I get that Brie Larson is allergic to cats so they used the CGI one but the problem is it looked terribly fake at times. If you can't keep it consistent, you know, either don't do it at all or just stick to one method. Captain Marvel, the character, doesn't develop or change in any significant way during the film. She becomes more powerful and that's it. At the start of the movie, we see that she already has raw power. When she gets emotional, she uses it. She's not a skilled fighter, easily defeated by Jude Law, and we don't see her use any skilled fighting later on. But we do see her unlock her power and just become really strong. You know, she's able to push back missiles, she's able to destroy a bunch of ships and threatens Ronin the Accuser, who is for whatever reason in this film, even though he does jack all. Back to Captain Marvel though, she doesn't really influence the other characters, so she doesn't have a reactive kind of character arc. The only type of reactive thing she does is that she helps the Skrulls, Talos, find his family, find some of their people, and help guide them, but we don't even see her help guide them. We just get implied that she's going to help them find a new home. She doesn't really help anyone change as a character, because the Skrulls, if everything is to go by as what we've been told in this movie, they've always been doing the good thing. They've just been defending themselves. So Captain Marvel didn't make them go good. Captain Marvel just realized that they were actually good. Captain Marvel doesn't make Nick Fury change. She introduces him to the idea of aliens, 
but his personality doesn't change. For at the start of the movie, he's making jokes, he's making quips, but he's a serious guy. At the end of the movie, he's making jokes, he's making quips, and he's a serious guy. She doesn't change at the end of the film. She's the same person she was at the start of the film, just stronger. The Skrulls are the same people they were at the start of the film. We just know that they're actually good now. Nick Fury is the same person he was at the start of the film. He's the same person that he was at the end of the film as he is in the Avengers and so on and so forth. Captain Marvel's best friend, um, the co-pilot, she really doesn't undergo many changes. She just realizes, oh, there's aliens out in space. She flies a ship in space. You know, she's able to destroy one of the alien spaceships. And it's really like, you know, none of this was earned. You're just giving them these things. They're not undergoing any sort of development. That's a problem that plagues this whole film. It's a problem with the writing, it's a problem with the direction. So you now understand why I believe a Captain Marvel is a poorly made character because she doesn't change. Most of the characters in this film are poorly written because they don't really undergo any character development or any change. They either just become more aware of the universe which we as an audience are already aware of or they just gain raw power without much of a struggle. Captain Marvel really easily defeats Supreme Intelligence just because she has her memories back and then she just unlocks her powers and it doesn't really feel earned in a sense and it just feels given to her. Continuing on, I just want to point out that I hate how Nick Fury loses his eye. I think the fact that that cat monster scratches him and then he gets the eye patch is pretty pathetic because in The Winter Soldier he says the last time he trusted someone he lost an eye so what the last time he trusted a cat that was a monster that eats people and he knew that and it scratched his eye he lost an eye? Nah, that's bull. Talos, I really like the main scroll played by Ben Mendelssohn, I'm pretty sure. A really well-developed character. I feel sympathy for him and I understand him, but it just doesn't really make sense with what I know about scrolls. So I'm just wondering how that plays out. And I do enjoy the whole war between the skulls and the Kree. I think that was interesting and well explored. I do want to see more of it as well. And that's really all I have to say. There's really only that one good thing. There are a few good jokes here and there some of which work well with the interaction between aliens and humans. But overall, the action was pretty bland and alright at times. The CGI was terrible at times and at times, you know, what you expect from a movie of this caliber. The writing and directing was pretty poor and the characters were terrible, none of which undergo any sort of growth. While talking about growth, I'm just going to quickly make a comparison. We have the Thor movies. In the first Thor movie, Thor is a really powerful god. We see him do a bunch of heroic things, but he's cocky. He loses his powers and he learns what it is to be a hero. He learns what it is to be human. Then he gains back his powers and he defeats Loki. It's a struggle. Thor 3. We see, as I stated earlier, he unlocks his full potential of the God of Thunder and he's still not able to defeat the villain. But in Captain Marvel, what we see is Carol Danvers, Captain Marvel, a person who has raw power. She has all this power that was given to her, sure, from the Tesseract blowing up and whatnot, but she doesn't really lose it and understand what it is to be human. She doesn't understand this power itself. She just gets her memories back and becomes even more powerful. Bringing this initial reaction, which is actually relatively long for my initial reaction to a close, overall the lazy action scenes with some good banter and a sympathetic villain, but a poor lead bring this Marvel movie down to a 4 or 5 out of 10 at best. Really, it's one of the worst MCU movies. I'd say it's on par with or just slightly better than Thor The Dark World, which is probably my least favorite Marvel movie. And really, there's hope in the future, and I don't really know if I'm excited to see Captain Marvel in Avengers Endgame itself. As long as she doesn't defeat Thanos, as long as she isn't one of the big characters in the fight, I'll be happy because there's more to do with her before I'm happy to see her play such an important role in an Avengers movie.